Hello and welcome to today's webinar, Unlocking the Power of Custom Widgets in WebEx Contact Center. My name is Carmen Lamson and I will be your host. For today's webinar, we will be using Slido Embedded App for Polls and Q&A. Look for it to pop up on the right side of your screen. You can also participate on your mobile device by scanning the QR code. If you experience any technical difficulties, reach out using the QA section within the Slido app in WebEx or to me directly. Leading today's webinar is Cisco Distinguished Speaker and Senior Developer Evangelist, Phil Belanti. Joining Phil is Developer Evangelist and App Hub Partner Support, Aficionado Giosanini, along with Adam Weeks, WebEx Developer Evangelism Team Manager. This team, along with the Developer Support Team, will answer your questions during the Q&A session later in the webinar. Before we get started with today's topic, Phil will share some things to look out for. Take it away, Phil. Great. Thank you very much, Carmen, and hello, everybody. Uh, just some quick uh, WebEx developer content updates and announcements that we'd like to share with you before we get to the main presentation on uh, custom wi widgets in uh, WebEx Contact Center. So it's going to be a good one. Uh, but uh, let's start with some items that can be found uh, on the blog section uh, of the developer portal. Uh, and that's uh, developer.webex.com slash blogs. Um, so let's go ahead and start with that. Uh, so the first one, uh, it's from today's presenter, Adam Weeks. He wrote a great overview of the developer content and activities at the uh, WebEx1 2023 event. Um, it was a really, really great event. Um, it took place in Anaheim, California last month. Um, but, you know, in this blog, he highlights all the latest around the AI innovations and exciting new uh, insights shared in our developer sessions. Uh, so be sure to check that one out. It was a really good event. Uh, but the next one, uh, we are very pleased to announce uh, the latest updates of the WebEx Mobile SDK, which is now at version 3.10. Uh, so this update adds support for up to three call transfers, um, and it also brings in additional advanced calling features. Um, so really, with, with this version, it's going to satisfy many essential mobile use cases, you know, in industries such as uh, retail, banking, and other customer service entities. Uh, WebEx Engineering Product Manager, Kriti Jane, explains it all in a new blog post, so be sure to see that one, too. Um, and now next uh, is a really, really good how-to blog post, uh, and this is from uh, my colleague, uh, Joe Zanini, uh, who's also one of the developer evangelists for WebEx. Uh, and this is uh, one about using dynamic redirection for WebEx OAuth integration. So in this one, Joe shows us how we can redirect users to multiple URLs based on behavior or preferences or device type. Um, so that kind of stuff can enhance the user journey and also provide the developer valuable optimization data. Um, so that's a great uh, how-to blog post. Uh, and then uh, finally, in this section here, um, we have a, a great uh, partner called Pitch Hub, and this is a, a spotlight blog that they wrote. Um, so in this developer success story, uh, you know, they're one of our app hub partners, Pitch Hub. Uh, you can learn how they uh, leverage, you know, how you can leverage a virtual teleprompter um, and more inside of WebEx meetings, you know, so you can level up your presentations. Um, you can, it's really cool. It's, we, we were actually showing it off at WebEx One. Um, you know, you can, uh, you know, add the teleprompter right inside the meeting. You can put it underneath your camera and you can customize it, like the scroll speed and everything. Um, so really, really great to, you know, have really nice presentations, you know, professional presentations. Uh, but as part of this blog, they also explain how seamless it, the process was for them to get listed on the WebEx App Hub. Um, so you know, this is a really great way to kind of see some real world use cases uh, and uh, and find out how, how easy it is to get your app listed uh, on the App Hub uh, once it's ready. Uh, and once you get your fill of reading content, you can head on over to our developer vidcast collection. You know, we're always adding new recorded content. Um, you know, there's a couple of recent ones that were, uh, you know, that were recently recorded, I want to mention. Um, so uh, WebEx cloud engineer, uh, Priya Kasari recorded a great walkthrough of the WebEx uh, uh, calling SDK, uh, it, the, uh, uh, specifically the kitchen sink app for the calling SDK. Uh, this way, developers can get quickly familiarized with the main functionality of the SDK. Um, uh, so, you know, that's a, a, that's what vidcasts are for, right? Get us started quickly. Um, show us something so we don't always have to read the manual. 
Uh, but in another vidcast, uh, WebEx product manager Ralph Schiffer shows us how WebEx service apps can access calling CDRs. So uh, service apps are, are perfect for mission critical integrations, uh, and many of these are reported use cases. Uh, so this vidcast is a good way to learn about how that can be accomplished. Um, so that's all the uh, the news and updates that we have for this time around. Uh, so let's hand it off to our main speaker, Adam. Adam, take it away. Hey, thanks, Phil. Um, usually I'm not in front of the camera, but I, I, we're very excited to be talking about the WebEx Contact Center uh, on this webinar here. Um, if, you're, if you're like me, you've been uh, a developer on the WebEx platform for a long time. But you know, we really have been ramping up our efforts into develop the, you know, the developer story for WebEx Contact Center. Uh, so that's why we really wanted to make sure that we've got a lot of content. And you know, if you're if you're like us and migrating over, or if you are a Contact Center developer already, we're hopefully this will get you some a lot of information for WebEx Contact Center. Uh, so yeah, my name is Adam Weeks. I am the manager of WebEx Developer Evangelism. Um, I'm based here in, in Central Florida, and usually it's uh, a bit warmer here, but, you know, as you see, I got my, my jacket on here and a little, little chill here for us Floridians. Um, I've been a programmer all my life. I've actually been with Cisco since 2016 on the WebEx side. Uh, I, I started off in the, uh, with the WebEx widgets and the SDK side and moved over here to the evangelism team. So I'm really excited to share with you what we've got. Um, and so let's go ahead and get into it. Uh, the first thing I wanted to do is show you this, the Slido poll that we've got here. There we go. Um, and this was something that was highlighted at WebEx One when they're talking about uh, Contact Center and talking about how, how many days uh, the average person spends on hold in their lifetime. And the, the whole thing with Contact Center is, is that we really want to reduce this, this number. Um, and it looks like we've got, I'm going to go ahead and show the correct answer. It looks like we've got a few people still answering, but the correct answer, if I can show the correct answer here, is 43. So it looks like you all, I don't, I don't know if you were all tuned into WebEx One and, and, and maybe spoiled the answer here, but yeah, you all were right on the number there. So yeah, 43 days a person spends on hold. Uh, so that that's, we're really hoping to really drop those numbers here uh, with, with WebEx Contact Center and customer experience. Um, next, we, we I did want to go back and show that we had a, switch this presentation here. We do have a, a previous Contact Center webinar that we had back in September. Um, second, sorry about that. And just checking in to see if anybody was able to, to take, a, take a look. If you haven't, this was a great overview from our WebEx uh, Contact Center program managers. Uh, and they went all over the Contact Center APIs, the whole developer environment here. Um, just trying to get a check in. It looks like a lot of people haven't, weren't able to, to take a look at that uh, webinar yet. But if you haven't, we have them up on our, our portal for developerwebex.com slash webinars. And you can rewatch the that previous webinar to get a good overview. Um, so there might be some things that were covered in that webinar that we're going to try to not cover here. Um, so it'd be a good chance to to really get a, a good view of the the landscape for WebEx Contact Center if you check that webinar out. Uh, for, for for today's today's webinar, we're going into the the desktop widgets and what exactly are desktop widgets. So the first thing, like when you go into WebEx Contact Center as an agent or a supervisor, uh, that view is called your desktop. And you can customize this desktop however you like. You can bring in extra external applications. You can build your own applications within WebEx Contact Center. You can change the layout around. Um, as you see, this, this screenshot has a ton of additional uh, widgets added to it. Uh, that weren't aren't by default, and we're going to go over a few of the ways of actually how we go about customizing and bringing in some of that content uh, and and connecting with our contact center desktop. But first, before I go into that, when you build your application, we can publish your application for all of our WebEx contact center 
uh, customers. And that, that application will live up on our WebEx app hub. Um, we do have, we have a few apps already up there on the WebEx app hub. The numbers are growing uh, steadily. If you're interested in building with us, the, we do have a, a link directly on that developer portal that you can click on and be in touch with one of our business development managers. And we can talk about partnering and getting your application up on, on the WebEx app hub. Um, and for that, I have actually have a, we have actually have a special guest that we want to bring in from the WebEx app hub. Uh, and that's uh, Ted Phipps from Spensai. Ted, can you hear me okay? Yes, I can hear you very much, uh, very well. Thank you so much, Adam. Great, yeah. So why don't you tell, uh, tell our developers about what your app, application does and, and how they go about using it? Uh, sure, thanks so much. So um, here at, at Spinsai, our company is focused on delivering better, help, better healthcare outcomes and better patient engagement across the entire spectrum of healthcare. So, you know, as we know, there's a lot of opportunities for, for improved experience uh, in the healthcare space. We know that a lot of people, you know, as they go through their healthcare journey are really experiencing kind of moments of truth where they really need things to go smoothly. So that's kind of where we sit as a company is delivering better healthcare outcomes. Uh, and what we've done uh, in the integration to WebEx Contact Center is we've integrated one of our products into, into the platform, and that product is Patient Assist. So with the Patient Assist plat uh, with the Patient Assist product, what that allows us to do is it allows uh, a contact center agent, perhaps in this case it's uh, some kind of healthcare professional or a nurse, um, when a call uh, from a patient gets routed to this uh, agent using the WebEx Contact Center desktop, uh, we're going to do a screen pop into the SpinSci Patient Assist application. And from within that application, a, uh, that, that, um, that healthcare professional is going to have everything they need to know in order to service the, the request from that patient. So uh, they're going to have access to their healthcare records, their um, referral information, their uh, pharmacy and prescription information. Uh, and that, and rather than having to use, you know, multiple applications to, to get their job done, just from within that single application, that healthcare professional is going to be able to effectively uh, manage that patient uh, and, and, you know, fulfill their prescriptions or, or uh, you know, referrals or, or other types of uh, applications there. So um, by having this integration right within the WebEx Contact Center desktop, um, then uh, we're going to be able to, you know, lower handle time. Uh, it's going to allow the, that uh, health provider to process more calls more effectively uh, and deliver better outcomes, right? We know what it's like to, to be in that uh, contact center agent seat and have to switch between different applications to get your job done. Uh, and, and really that comes at the expense of, of the patient's time and the effectiveness of the interaction. So this is an important integration. Uh, Spinsci has been a partner of Cisco for, for a long time. Uh, you know, it's really the Cisco Finesse product that really brought this idea of, of third-party widgets uh, as an agent desktop, you know, at the, you know, to the forefront of the contact center. So, and, and it's good to see the WebEx contact center is kind of extending on that overall uh, approach. Um, so we're really excited about what we've done here with WebEx contact center. Uh, and, and also too, you know, as customers, uh, move from some of the on-prem Cisco ap applications like Contact Center Express and Contact Center Enterprise, it's really a seamless transition. That patient assist application that worked on Cisco Finesse, now um, you know, it's the same application within WebEx Contact Center. So within this uh, integration, we support uh, WebEx Contact Center, we support WebEx Contact Center Enterprise in addition to Contact Center Express and Contact Center Enterprise. Uh, just kind of expanding from here, um, if, if we were to go to the next slide, uh, the, the spin side portfolio, uh, you know, in addition to patient assist, we have other applications that are part of this whole healthcare uh, journey, right? We have a patient engage platform, which integrates to the Cisco uh, IVR platform uh, that allows a patient to uh, schedule appointments, allows them to uh, fulfill uh, pharmacy prescriptions. Again, really a close and careful integration in with the WebEx platform that, that allows us to do that. That's kind of patient engage. Uh, and that, that product 
Uh, we, you know, it's AI enabled. We really want to make it as seamless as possible to uh, to have a you know a good self service uh, interaction for that patient. Um, we also have a, another product called Patient Notify, which uh, kind of serves as a reminders for for patients to know when their uh, prescriptions need to be refilled or when they might have a doctor's appointment. I mean, the cost of no show appointments uh, within the healthcare industry is huge. So being able to send notifications uh, is is really important uh, and really allows for better healthcare outcomes. In that case, the patient notify product is integrated in with the WebEx portfolio, including the WebEx Connect. So you know, as we have kind of you know CPaaS type of integrations by having web by having patient notify as part of WebEx Connect, um, we really can deliver really a great. Uh, kind of notification uh, platform for patients. So, you know, when you look at the the whole, if you go to the next slide, um, you know, if you if you look at kind of the whole healthcare experience, um, you know, it starts with notifications, um, with self service, with uh, engagement with a with a human agent, uh, you know, a nurse or or other types of uh, you know healthcare provider. Um, all of these are integrated in with the WebEx portfolio. Uh, and also to, you know, for, for payment options and things of that sort, we also have a, uh, a patient comply in uh, product, which allows um, us to scrub kind of credit card information from the interaction uh, so that we can achieve PCI compliance. So SpinSci is dedicated to, to Cisco and to the portfolio and, you know, is a big supporter of Cisco. Uh, and, and our platform really is designed to deliver these better healthcare outcomes and, and the integration with WebEx Context Center makes that all that all that much easier. Great. Thanks, Ted. I really appreciate you uh, sharing with your application. It's really exciting and we'll look forward to having you up on the app hub shortly. Great. Thank you, Adam. All right. Thanks for joining us. So back to the the widget configuration. So this is the first thing that we you really want to start getting into uh, when you're when you're editing your widgets. There's a bunch of different entry points for knowledge on how the widgets are set up and laid out. Uh, but we're going to start off with the widget configuration, and that's done by your your WebEx admin. Uh, if you don't have a WebEx admin account, you definitely should go ahead and get a, a, a sandbox. We've got a slide here at near the end with the link to, to show you how to get to your developer sandbox. Uh, but once you have that developer sandbox, you can log into WebEx Control Hub, go into the contact center area, and then you can go in and edit these layouts. Um, the desktop layouts are, it's a large JSON file uh, that you can configure. Uh, it's, they're com you, you completely configurable. And there's three different areas that you can configure. You can configure the agent, the supervisor, or the supervisor agent roles. And so each one of those has their own layout. If you wanted to have your agents have a different view than your supervisors, you can. Uh, even with, with this on, on in Control Hub, you can actually configure desktop layouts based off of Teams too. So not just the role, but the team. So if you've got users in a particular team that they need to have a specific layout, you can, you can definitely configure that through the Control Hub. Um, once you once you edit your JSON file and upload it, there's it'll, it'll validate it for you uh, on the Control Hub. Let you know if you made any any issues or any problems with, with those configurations. But that's where you're really going to get started with with WebEx uh, desktop layout configurations. One thing that I, I'll bring into this is that you know these the desktop uh, layout JSON files are very large. They're huge JSON files. Uh, when you're editing with them, uh, what I, I like to open them up in Visual Studio Code. Uh, as you see over here on the left side, there is this thing called the, the Visual Studio Code has an outline, and that will save you so much time. Just let me let me preface this because if you go into here, um, you'll you maybe you may make a mistake, mistake like I did, and uh, I worked on the desktop configuration, changed all this layout, and then I didn't realize that. It wasn't working, uh, and I kept logging in. It wasn't. I wasn't seeing it. And what happened was, was I was actually logging in as the uh, the supervisor, um, and I had made all the changes in the agent on the agent side. Uh, so once I realized that, I opened up this outline and saw where I was actually working in the JSON file that I was working in the agent uh, role. I was able to quickly. Uh, so hopefully that that little tip helps you uh, save a few hours. 
uh, at my expense. Uh, but yeah, the, the Visual Studio Code, the, the outline uh, editor that they have for, for JSON files is going to really come in handy on that. So now we've got our configuration file. We know what we're going to do. Let's talk about the different areas that you can actually customize on that desktop layout. So there's four main areas that we've got here. Um, one thing is that the, the first thing is the title and logo. You can configure that through your desktop layout uh, file. That's not really considered a, a, a widget, so we're not going to go too much into that today besides just mentioning that you can do that. Um, the second one is that header. So across the top, you can configure, you know, you've got your agent status. You can place a call and do notifications on there as a default. But then you can you can do things up up in that header uh, and, and throw some information, quick access, quick action items uh, up there. Um, the next one is the workspace, so that's the main area of the contact center. So underneath that, in that area, you can completely customize what you want to have. There are for, there are a few different types uh, that you can actually do within that workspace area that we're going to get to here shortly. Um, and then on the left side, that number four, that's the navigation bar. So this is where you can create custom pages. You don't really have to have, you don't have, you're not stuck with just the one page that, that comes up. If you want to have multiple pages for your, your, your desktop layout and be able to go in and it, what it will do is give you a brand new workspace uh, in that area. And we'll, we'll talk about that in just a little bit. The first thing I want to talk about is, is that header area. So you see on, on this screenshot, this has got a couple of custom widgets added to it. Uh, so there's a, there's a, so we've got a capacity. Someone's written a little capacity widget that shows, you know, what, what your, your team's capacity is at. Uh, and then right next to it in that blue area, that's a, an RSS feed reader. So if you've got like, you know, if you want to have your co corporate news scrolling up through there for, for your agents to take a look at, or if there's something that they need to, you know, constantly be monitoring for news, uh, that, that you can use this, this header widget for the RSS uh, feed. And it, actually you can scroll through the RSS feed and click on them. Uh, and we've got those samples up, uh, up on, our, uh, on our GitHub. The next area that I was talking about, this is the big one, it was that, that navigation with the custom pages. Uh, so this this example here, we've got like a custom address book uh, that this sample is up on our GitHub as well that you can take a look at. But this, what this does is, you know, we've got you can see we've got the, a whole new tab over there over here on the left side uh, added in. So that's where that navigation side comes in. And then it brings that whole desktop, this whole desktop area in the middle where you can have this custom custom page and then you can change the layout however you however you like. Uh, it is just, you know, it's just a, a web view, so you can change the layout and, uh, and how you want it actually being displayed once you get to that custom page. Now, there's another uh, different area called persistent widgets. So you can actually make those custom widgets, you can actually configure any widget to be a, a persistent widget. And these widgets display on all pages of the desktop. Uh, persistent widgets display in... What we're, sh what we're showing here is that, so we've got that the contact center agent is on a call. And once it's on a call, you show this information uh, and it, it will pop up on, on that page for once you, once you are in an active call. Um, it's really, really exciting to be able to, you know, be able to show, if you want to show some quick information, um, we do have two different types of, of widgets on this persistent widget demo that we're being shown. This is the, the iframe widget and the web component widget. We're gonna go into that in, a, in just a minute uh, about the differences between those two types of widgets. Uh, but just know like when the persistent widget will always show up when the agent is on call. Uh, but also on, on the following screen, this is what a persistent widget looks like on, on any other of the other pages that if you want it to just show up, stays on the screen. Uh, this one doesn't require the, the developer or the uh, agent to be on a call for it to show up. So this, this is, we have some sample of these persistent widgets as well on our GitHub for you to check out. So definitely recommend you checking that out. We also have uh, another type of, of widget that's called the, the headless widget. So these are ones that don't have a UI element. Um, they are they're really good for monitoring events and actions when they happen with the agent. 
uh, a, a lot of our our, um, our sample our, our CRM integrations or with like our Salesforce integration that we've got that sends data over to Salesforce uses a headless widget and what it does is it monitors those statuses when things change, it will automatically send sends that data up into to Salesforce. Uh, these this pairs really nicely with our the JavaScript SDK, and so you can actually use a headless, headless widget to start monitoring those events through the SDK. Um, and you can also a lot of a lot of things that we're seeing uh, people using headless widgets for as well is activating those screen pops. Uh, like Ted was mentioning before, you know they, they've got if you need to pop up something to to the agent. To, to give them quick information, uh, you can definitely, you can use that to do those screen pops um, on, on there. Now, previously we talked about the two different types of widgets when we were talking, when you saw on that slide about the persistent widgets for the iframe and the uh, web component widgets. I'm gonna go into a little bit of the information on configuring these widgets and how to go about you know, some of their pros and cons and limitations on that side. So first off is the easiest way. It's a, it's the iframe widgets. So this will this if you're if you're a web application developer, and you're familiar with iframes. You really it's just it's dropping an iframe onto onto the agent's desktop. Uh, you can easily embed your your existing web web content on there. It's going to pull up whatever is on there. So what we've got on our persistent widget sample that's being shown here is just a YouTube video. So it, you know if if you want to be have a quick YouTube video for your agents to be able to review something, you can do you can embed that in there. Uh, you can customize the size of where it's being displayed and how it's being displayed. Um, the 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 biggest negative on on this on the iframe widgets though is that you cannot use the the SDK or the the store data to send information from the desktop to the iframe. Uh, so that's that's the biggest limitation. It is a quick way to get some web content into your desktop, but you cannot use those those SDK or store data. So it's there's not that there's not that communication between the the desktop and and the widget when you're using the iframe widget. It just loads that web content for the the end user. Now the next more powerful way is to, to use web components. So we do have web components widgets that you can build. You, it just uses our, the standard web components libraries uh, and the standard frameworks that we have for, for web application developers. Fully customizable, you know, if, if, you know, if you're a React or an Angular developer, you're familiar with building components in, into your web applications, this is the same way. It's just without, without the framework, just using those web components. Uh, you can configure parameters for, for your widgets uh, for your web components. So if you want to send some data over directly within the parameters when it's being uh, instantiated, you can do that. You can also pull in the SDK within your web component and start and it automatically has it has that link between the, the, the desktop and your and your web component. You'll be able to use that SDK to pull in some information. And we're going to go into that SDK in just a second here. But but yeah, the downside of this one is, is it does require much more development. You know, you do have to build a full component. You can't use any sort of existing um, iframe web, you know, web applications already. But if you do have, if you're already using some sort of web components in your application development and you want to pull it into the, the desktop, that's perfectly fine. So next, uh, we you know talking about powering the widgets with data. So we, we talked about you know sending the agent status or the uh, light and dark mode over to to our to our widgets. If you want to have that communication with our widgets, like we have in that that web components, there's a couple different ways you can do that too. So the, you know, we've gone into all the different areas that you can configure the widgets. We've done the types of widgets. Now we're going to talk about how we actually get data from our our contact center into our widgets. And the first way to do it is the, the desktop JavaScript SDK. It, it is an NPM package that you can, you can install in your, in your web component. Uh, you can request information such as agent details, assign tasks and the details on the specific task. Also gets you that access token for a single sign-on. Um, it, it gives you that real-time information from the events. Uh, you can access and modify our, your desktop data like I say, you know, you get that information from from the SDK, and you can 
push it data back out there um, and, th and always and power up your your web component widget by using that desktop SDK. This this slide is a little code heavy, but just kind of going into so a, as a developer, when you're pulling in that that npm package and you pull in that desktop, uh, kind of kind of go through some of the the different modules that that are provided within that. Uh, the first one is the config module. That's that's how you initialize your desktop and initialize that communication uh, between your your web component and your uh, contact center desktop. That's going to be the very first thing you're usually going to do when you're pulling in the SDK is initializing the SDK with that config module. Um, the next module we've got is actions. So these are the things where you can you you actually can do things to the WebEx the contact center desktop. If you want to add a custom task for a, a an agent, you can do that directly through the SDK with that actions thing. So that's what that sent, that goes on there. Um, a logger. So there, there, it, you know, as developers, we love seeing logs and making sure that things are working properly. You can do things such as creating your own logger instance to have all the the contact center things from your widgets output it into that logger. Um, the sample code that we've got here is is actually downloading those logs. So if you've got something that you need to download the log to to the user, if the, there's like a help request or there's some sort of issue with your widget, you can use that. You can use this logger um, to download those things and send it over to your support team. Uh, the next module is the shortcut key service module. So this is something so you can actually listen for the key presses within Contact Center. So if the agent does something on, on here, you can do uh, you, you can listen to those key presses and actually fire off different events. Uh, during those those shortcut keys or as, as the agent's being hit. Um, the next one is I18N, and that is short for internationalization. So if you've got, you know, different locales or using WebEx Contact Center and you want to make sure that the uh, your, your internationalization of the text that's in your widget matches, this is where you would you would go creating those instances to to start making those those changes to the to the text in there so it, it matches the right locale for for your contact center user. Uh, agent contact. So agent contact it, you know allows you to get information about about that agent uh, if a contact is assigned. So the the sample code that we've got here, we've got an event listener for when a, an uh, agent contact is assigned. Once that happens, you can you can grab that event, start uh, processing that event however you like to see. Uh, things, specific items done. Uh, there's also the agent state info. So this is like, you know, when, if you want to know about what, what's happening with, with the agent, if he's on a call, if he's not on a call or in a meeting uh, or not available, this is where you would go and put in that SDK and add that event listener uh, with that agent state info module. Um, Obviously, uh, dialer is the next one. So this is actually, do you, if you need to have your agent actually dial out to someone, uh, automatically do it through through the through your widget. You would use this dialer. So this sample code, the desktop dialer dot start out dial, that's going to start that that uh, your agent dialing out a call. And then finally, uh, screen pop. So yeah, we mentioned screen pop a few times already now, but yeah, this is how you can go about creating those screen pops listening for one to come up uh, or actually you know making one appear so the SDK is super powerful lots of different modules that you can utilize in your application um, use one or many of them as you see fit and you know it's it's gonna be really exciting to see what you build on that the next way uh, to get information into your into your web component, and this is what we were talking about earlier when I was talking about uh, the parameters, sending over parameters to your widget. So this is the 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 store. So this is the data store within Contact Center. Um, so these these properties here are being sent over to our our web component, and as they change, they will update. And if your web component is configured properly, you can listen for those changes and then automatically pull in the, the information that's being provided in these properties. 
So maybe you don't need to have a whole lot of power pulling from the SDK, but you need to have a, a little bit of information coming from contact center. Uh, this would be a good way to, to go about doing so without having to pull in the full SDK into your web component. Um, one of the, the biggest things that we see people are using it for it is to that this uh, dark mode. So store.app.dark mode. This will allow you to update your web component to the right style based off of what the uh, the, the, the agent has has their uh, display mode set as. So if, if you've got a, a, an all white widget that's really bright and the agent is, has switched over to dark mode, you don't really wanna have that, your widget, you know, your component just bl blaring out in the middle. So let's listen for that, those changes and update your widget to, to use those. Um, there are a few different things uh, on there accessible through that store as well. Get inf information very similar to like we had in the SDK. Get information about the agent, the agent's contacts, uh, details about the app itself. You can get information about the user's authentication, uh, the general notifications, and dynamic. Uh, if you take a look at the our desktop guide, we've got there's a full documentation out there. For you uh, on, on our developer portal, the guy that goes through everything that's in that's available in that uh, that store object. And finally, so getting started. So now that you've got that knowledge, you kind of have some ideas on what you want to do and what you want to build and how you want to bring in those those widgets into your contact center desktop experience. The first thing you want to do is get a WebEx contact center developer sandbox. This gets you your own instance of WebEx Contact Center, allows you to be an admin so you can have a you know, full access over it so you don't mess with your company's corporate instance. If you just need to you know, have a place to start building and trying things out, highly recommend pulling up and getting, requesting a developer sandbox. You can get that through our developer portal, uh, the Contact Center developer portal, which is developer.webex-cx.com slash sandbox. Uh, once you make that request, it takes, I believe it's about 48 hours to get a uh, turnaround, but you get a full instance with uh, a, a couple of, of dialable lines. You get uh, an agent, you get a supervisor account. It's a fully fully set up uh, sandbox for your contact center development, and it's a great place to get started in, in trying out building for WebEx Contact Center. Also mentioned earlier, actually quite a few times that we've got some sample code for our widgets out there uh, on, on GitHub. So on github.com slash WebEx samples, WebEx contact center API samples, uh, there is a, you know, a widget, a folder called widget samples within that whole repo. That's going to have a ton of different examples. Like you've, some of those have already shown today. There's also quite a few in there. Kind of just give you some ideas to get started. You can pull that code down get going really quickly. Uh, there, a lot of these have videos and, and good readme documentation for each one of these samples too that the, the team has put together that shows you how to go about using these samples. So you'll never get lost when you're getting built on, on there. But if you do get lost and you wanna talk with some other developers in that contact center developer community, we do have on our on our Cisco forum, Cisco community forums, there is a specific area for contact center developers that is separate from our, our WebEx developers uh, area right now. Uh, so we have the, the link here, the CSCO slash WebEx CC dev community. So that's that's going to be the short link to get get you directly to that those community forums so you can start interacting with with other developers that are building on for WebEx contact center. Um, I know our, our developer support team is out there monitoring that. And we also uh, mentioned, I don't have a, a slide for our contact center uh, developer support, but we do have developer support as well. So if you've got something that you don't want to post in, in community forums for everyone to see and you do have questions, we do have a contact center uh, developer support that you can reach out to that will help you build. I know we've kind of gone through this really quickly, uh, but yeah, so here's some, some more resources for you for when you're going through um, our developer portal, developer community we talked about already, uh, sample code and resources. We've got, you know, all, all that information out there. 
Uh, I think the links are going to be dropped in the chat for you. And if not, we'll also have them up on our, on our community forums. And then that, that app up for contact center. So we, you know, like, like we had it earlier uh, with, with Spenside, they, their, their application, if you want to get to see some of the other apps that are up there on WebEx Contact Center, uh, take, take a look out at App Hub and we can go from there. And, uh, and that's kind of, if you need some inference, you know, some motivation, some influence that you want to, to take a look at and see what other, other people are building. So that wraps up the information that we've got about widgets we you know, it's very high level we've got a quite a few different uh series coming up we're going to be dive, doing some deep dives into each one of those areas uh the first one's going to be the, the header widgets so stay tuned for that but i uh do want to get uh we do have a we're going to try something new for this for this webinar we're going to give away a 50 dollars webex store gift card for whoever is paying the the most attention uh, so if you've got your Slido up and ready, we're going to have a quiz over uh, over everything here. So I'm going to see if I can kick this off here. We've got the quiz started. I'll let people join in. I do have to preface this is that... Uh, well, we do appreciate uh, our, our fellow Ciscoians uh, joining the quiz. We cannot give the uh, the gift card away to you, but uh, so if we have a Cisco winner, we're gonna have to give we're gonna have to give the award to the the first uh, non Cisco winner. All right. So looks like we've got oh people still pull joining in. I'll let them let that go for just a minute. Joe, Phil, anything I missed about widgets that uh, while we're uh, getting started here with our quiz? I think it was a pretty good start. All right. <laughs> very, very good. Very good high level overview. I think the only thing that I would add is that as we talk about developing is that the entry point for developers to actually make this function in the desktop is going to be that that agent desktop JSON file. And there, there's a whole uh, user-facing document on that. Um, in fact, I'll, I'll get that up right now and, and put that in the chat. Um, yeah, so so that's going to be a, the part for me that was the the most confusing part. Was like, okay, I developed this. Now where do I put it? And then that that JSON file. Uh, but but for for a webinar, it would get really confusing if we started diving into that thousand line mm -hmm. JSON file. Yeah. All right, so let me go ahead and get this. I'll go get this quiz started here. Looks like we've got just about everyone joined in. I'm going to hit start now. So, what is not an area of customization for the widgets? The header, navigation, metadata, or headless? Hmm. Time is up. And now we can. So the correct answer was metadata. So it looks like we got a lot of people nailed on here. Mm -hmm. Let's take a look at the leaderboard after the first. Yeah, because it does. So you got to be quick on these things here. So uh, on the Slido quiz, they do have a, you know, a timing component into it. All right, so let's go to the next question. What type of widgets can you make? Iframe widgets, web component widgets, or COBOL widgets? And we're at time. It looks like I didn't fool anybody with that one. Phil, I know you're a big Cobol fan, right? Yeah, I'm surprised there wasn't more people <laughs> putting Cobol on there, no? Yeah. So, there. yeah, iframe and web components are, are the way to go. And finally, using the SDK requires what type of widget? An iframe widget or a web component widget?
looks like we got everybody answered. Looks like they, I'm happy to see that everyone was paying attention really well. It looks like we did a really great job. Mm -hmm. And let's go to the final results. All right, congratulations, Marcelin. Nailed the things with extra time. Uh, not an area of customization. It looks like it was the hardest question on the quiz. Well, by one second. It's yeah, close. just by a nose. Mm -hmm. Cool. So, yeah, we'll be in touch. Check your, be monitoring your email. Uh, we'll be in touch on that. And I think we had some, some Q&A. Yeah, we sure right. did. Yes, we sure do. We've had some good questions come in. All right, so let me jump into that right Actually, I'm going to go back to leave this up for everybody while we're going through there. And feel free to keep dropping your questions in through um, Slido. Um, okay, so let's start with, are there any restriction, restrictions changes on if you have a custom widget on a non-RTMS tenant versus a RTMS one? Uh, I, I'm i just now... RTMS is going to be the real-time media streams, and that doesn't really... Uh, conflict with what the, the data that's being produced in the uh, uh, desktop. So the answer to that is no. Um, that, that's just the method in which we're getting media data uh, to to the uh, agent and vice versa. So for voice channels, um, video channels, stuff like that. Um, but but what we see in the desktop, it's it's a strictly a web application that that works regardless if RTMS is enabled or if RTMS is disabled. Cool. Thanks, Great. Joe. Thanks, Joe. All right. There's another question coming up. Is there anything that must be considered regarding the web content being displayed in the agent's desktop when using iframe widgets? So there is a content security policy that, that needs to be adhere, adhered to. Um, and, and, or should be considered at least, um, also, you know, when third, when, 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 um, you, you, you're, you're using these, you know, you're using them at your own risk. So I, I would highly prefer, you know, use HTTPS, um, if you're going to be plugging in a URL, uh, uh, make sure that, that we're encryptions enabled. Um, uh, don't just be careful of the, you know, the developer is pointing a, a URL intentionally into the the agent desktop and we're providing agents and, and supervisors with with a iframed browser experience and so anything that's available on the internet and, and consumable via a browser can potentially be put into the agent desktop so we want to use best practices for for each organization and, and, and those best practices are different for every organization um, but 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 at a high level i would just you know refrain from using http use https um, and, and, and just, just be careful what you're doing when you're pointing that stuff at, at agents. Okay. Thanks, thanks, Jeff. Jeff. And the next question is, I have seen that for WebEx contact center digital channels, it is also possible to do pop-ups inside the WebEx contact center agent desktop that is normally opening, opening a URL. Could it also be a widget? It can, it can. So, so you, like in the flow builder, for example, um, you're able to, 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 to prompt during a flow, um, in, in, in a pop-up, right? And that's another way to get a screen pop. Um, you can also use the iframe widget. So if you're using that URL, um, in, in, in flow, for example, or in another digital channel, you can plug that into an iframe widget. It, it will work. Thank you, Joe. You're on a roll today. One more. Are there any tools that you recommend that converts React, Angular components into web components along with their styling? That's an Adam question. Oh, I haven't I haven't actually taken a look at any, any of those yet. I'm I'm sure there's got to be some some things. It's very very similar. You know, I'm a long time React developer, and stepping into web components was really really uh, really easy uh, because you know it's the same sort of concepts of building these smaller components. Um, no, I don't. I haven't taken a look, but uh, let me let me do some research, and I can I'll post post in the uh, the forums what I found. Got him. And one more: Can we engage CXC for customer POC? POC is that point of, of contact? contact? 
so yeah for concept yeah and i think what the um let's see here coc coc sorry Cisco analogies or Cisco had <laughs> yeah. oh, the acronyms yeah for sure um yeah I, I need to pull up the acronym bot yeah, <laughs> yeah C. C. you said coc well yeah we'll have to take a look at that I, I i'm not i'm not quite sure And then there's one also uh, I see up here that uh, I've seen that uh, WebEx uh, context center digital channels is also um, it is also possible to do pop ups inside the WebEx yeah. context center agent desktop. Yeah, we covered that. He, he we did that one. Us. Okay. All right. All right. Thanks for that link, Joe, in the chat. All right. Well, if there are. Mm -hmm. No other questions. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you for your time. Be sure to pop over to the WebEx Developer Community Forum where you can connect with the developer, WebEx developers as well as the support team in case you run into any challenges or have additional questions. Um, be sure to join us for the end of your review with Phil where we will cover an overview of all highlights from 2023, including events and um, everything. A to Z, 2023. You can register for that at developer.webex.com forward slash webinars. And with that, thank you, everyone. Enjoy the rest of your day. Thanks, Bye. everybody.